Good evening and welcome to the June 21st, 2016 meeting of the Hampton, New Hampshire Municipal Budget Committee. If everybody would please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Um, as always, uh, that we've done this year, I'm going to go around the table and ask everybody to introduce themselves um, so that there is an auditory uh, remark as to your name for our remote secretary. Uh, Ms. Barnes, if uh, you would be so kind as to start on your end, we'll work around the table. Regina Barnes, Board of Selectmen Representative. Mike Pierce. Sonny Kravitz. Brian Lapham. Mike Plouffe. Nick Bridal Chair. Stephen LeBranche. Oh, uh, I am the antidote to the Griffin Nine and Lie. My name is Timothy Citizen Jones. Vote as representative. Danielle Augustine. Bob Ladd, Village District Representative. Mary Louise Wolsey. Thank you. Um, next item on the agenda is. Um, the start of old business. Um, actually, I'll allow Mr. Henderson just walked in, so I'll allow him to sit at the table and ah. join us. How are you this evening, sir? Good, except for traffic. Uh, Mr. Henderson just joined us. Um, under old business, we had discussed um, on the calendar of needing a meeting in July and August, as those are typically um, months in which there's not a lot for us to talk about. Um, I figured I would put it here and open it up for discussion if need be, and then um, make a decision on whether or not we really need a meeting in July and August. Um, September is usually when the budget process starts to heat up pretty quickly, so I think it's that's the best time for us to come back and really dive into things with both feet. Mr. Chairman, Mr. LeBron. could I make a motion that we not meet in July and August? I'll second, Stephen. Oh, okay, thank you. Okay, motion is made by Mr. LeBranch, seconded by Ms. Wolseley. Um, to not meet in July and August, I will open the table for discussion. Brian? The only problem I have is we are, like, way behind in our minutes. Right, yeah. Um, did you have specific examples? I can go back to the 29th of February if I really stretch it. But um, there's been a bunch of minutes we have never approved. Uh, that were tabled, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. Correct? Okay. Um, well, I can have those certainly make sure those are ready um, for the first time that we do reconvene. That's fine. We can address those right out of the gate um, to put you at ease in that sense. Yeah. Um, I'll send you an email the ones that I know of, but sure. I know there are some that we just need. I mean, it's not a big thing, but. Okay. okay. Definitely worth considering that. I appreciate the thought. Um, any other discussion on it, Mr. Kravitz? Yeah, I really don't have any objections, but I mean, the board of selectmen meet, and you never know what issue is going to come up. So, you know, you, you can not schedule a meeting, but if, if something comes up, I think you should. So what you're saying is if there was an emergency to arise yeah. that would yeah. require I our attention gonna meet. Um, reaching out to... You can always do the call of the chair. Right. Yeah, right. and, and, and I, would, I would think that that would be the best way yeah. to handle it is if there was something that required our attention um, that, that we could do it that way. Um, that is a, a good point as well, Mr. Crabb. Is there a discussion at the table? Yeah, I just wanted to extend on that as far as budgeting goes. I mean, I know the, the budgets for the department aren't due to the town manager's office until I believe it's mid-July. Mm -hmm. And then by the time it comes to us, we're probably looking at, like, August anyway, so. Yeah, I remember it last year. We, the real meat and potatoes of the budget season really kicked up in September. Yeah. And it, it requires a lot of people yeah. to put in a lot of work at this stage in the game. 
um, which is why I thought September was a good time to come back. Not to mention, we are beach town. Everybody's busy July and August anyways, mm -hmm. trying to balance vacations and such. <clears throat> um, not that that's a, a, a good, solid reason to just get rid of meetings, but I want to make sure that we're very, very productive when we need to be, and I think September moving forward is the best time for us to get some good quality work done. Um, any other discussion at the table? No. One more point. Uh, you mentioned September, yeah, and we always have the school in. And mm -hmm. sometimes they come and sometimes they don't, and usually when they don't is when they don't get an invitation. So we might want to make sure they get an invite. Yeah, okay. just remember to invite them. Yeah. I can make sure I send that out yeah. and um, and definitely reach out. And um, I think that was something that was brought up by our school board rep earlier. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and, yeah. and their intent to come and speak to yeah. us. So I definitely think that that will be well received. And I'll make sure that goes out okay. uh, in the next week or two. Um, so what I would say is, um, you want to call for a vote? I was going to say the vote with the exception, put, put in the caveat there of the call the chair if there is a reason for us to meet to have that in there as well, if that's okay with you. Absolutely. And Ms. Woolsey, as you seconded it, all those in favor? Uh, we're going to do an auditory roll call just for the secretary, starting with you, Mr. Henderson. Mr. Henderson, Ms. Barnes, Mr. Pierce, Mr. Kravitz. Mr. Clough, myself, Mr. LeBranch, Ms. Augustine, Mr. Ladd, and Ms. Wolseley. All those opposed? Brian and those abstaining? Were you in the for, the against, or abstain? Yay. He's in the yay. Mr. Jones is in the affirmative. Okay. Um, the next item on the agenda is um, uh, RSA 91A, e Electronic Mail Communication. Um, I wanted to address um, the fact that there have been some subsequent consecutive uh, email chains that have been going on, and I would just ask that um, the reply all button, um, try, it, it gets really wishy-washy with uh, the 91A law to use the reply all button. Um, it has been used a few times. I'm asking it to stop. Um, if you need to get a contact with me or another member, do it directly and don't message the whole board because once somebody hits reply on, it sends a reply to the whole board. It's considered subsequential conversations and that is in turn a meeting that is not public and those um, are subject to uh, the 91A law. Mr. Jones. I refuse to change my practice in the use of the reply all button. What is your reason for that? What is my reason for that? Correct. Because my practice and policy is perfectly legitimate. I, I, the, in reference to the email that you sent out, which was just specifically information. Right. Um, here is an information, i.e., for years I believe it was, it was a um, video documentation, a video recording of the meeting. Um, that is okay to disseminate to the board. Video information, and that's it. Where it gets wishy-washy is when we start saying, this is how I feel about this situation, this is how I feel about that situation. For instance, when I send out the agenda to the minutes, I don't say, hey, this is my agenda and this is how I feel that we should talk about this conversation because that's something that needs to happen as a board. Um, so in a situation the way you handled it, Tim, you were incorrect, I would just caution people, do not put your opinion into emails because that is considered holding a meeting. If you are going to send out information for people to re read and review before the meeting, that is fine. Um, I just, it is a very slippery slope nowadays, so I would just recommend you to be cautious okay. when using that reply all button. Okay. okay. Does that cover mm -hmm. basically what you were trying to talk about? All I said was I refused to change my policy. I understand, but on it. And uh, if you look at my uh, use of the reply all button through the years, uh, it is used exclusively for sharing information that is already in the public. And, and, and I and do... There's nothing uh, wrong with that. It's, in fact, quite uh, healthy for the board to be equally informed and have easy access to information that is germane <coughs> to the topic at hand. I agree. And, and, and I think that the information that you disseminated was um, fair and, and within those constrictions of 91N. I think you were fine there. Um, this was more just a notice of caution ahead of time. Moving forward. I, know, I just wanted to caution you. No, note that when we overstated, say, do not use the reply all button, we're actually inhibiting the speech of our members 
to share information, factual information, already in the public with each other, that may be germane to the topic at hand. Sure. And I, I really do not like the chilling effect of that message. I said it to the prior chair as well, who was fond of making such statements. And I, I will continue to say so until the day I die. Okay. Oh, when is that going to be? <laughs> Soon, I hope. <laughs> that being said, I, I disseminated the uh, onto the next topic, of, uh, which is the approval of minutes from 5-17-2016. Um, I sent those out. Those have been made available since 5-22 um, online. Um, the majority of the minutes was a uh, annotation, analytical version of the, or summary of the NHMA presentation as we didn't really um, get much business um, accomplished at that meeting. Um, Mr. Chairman? My print is still running. <laughs> it, they did seem to be excessive for me. Um, <laughs> I will open up discussion. I saw Ms. Wilson's hand first, so I will let her okay. first. Okay. You're being very polite, kind of looking like that. I have a problem with the minutes of May. There are a couple of corrections I would like to make, but I'm not going to move to make the corrections because I feel that we have been handed an uh, incomplete uh, draft. The draft minutes should be prepared so that we can move to make a few minor corrections. But in this case, uh, I was really annoyed when I looked at the minutes. There are no page numbers, and there is no attribution at the end. I can't tell who did those. I can't tell on whose behalf that was done. The and, and TY, which is not on this draft, but which was on prior drafts, is not a person. This, these minutes are an historical record for this community. These minutes are going to go down in history for people to refer to in subsequent years. And I think we need to be really, really aware of that while we are doing these things. Um, at some point in time when the draft minutes are cleaned up a little bit. I'm not trying to clean up the wording. I can clean that up by amendment. But the format has got to be properly presented to this committee. I want to see your name on there as the chairman, and I want to see T.Y.'s name. T.Y. isn't a name. Those are initials. I mean, mine used to say, Mary Louise Wellesley, Chairman, Joan Rice, Secretary. And Joan Rice, Secretary, was on every piece of minutes that that woman did. So I think we need to be really careful about that. In addition, for your benefit and the benefit of the committee, I suggest that you ask the town office for a copy for each member of the Budget Committee of Chapter 569. It's called Cable Television. And this is the... Um, uh, amendment that town council made to the codes um, <laughs> after the <clears throat> fisticuffs broke out a couple of years ago at the zoning board meeting and the cable committee turned off the, uh, the channel. Uh, a couple of things I would like to point out to you. Um, under 569.4 programming policies, Town and other board meetings will be cable cast gavel to gavel, excluding those portions of meetings, A, about the moderator, B, where the board or committee in question has duly voted to go either into a non-public session under RSA 91A3 of the right to know law, or into a non-meeting as set forth in RSA 91A2 of the right to know law, or when upon motion duly made, you vote to take a break, which you can do, and then it says, under no circumstances shall a board member be afforded to write or the right to ask that another member or person be censored or the microphone turned down. 91A2 has four specific areas. You can go into non-public if 
if you're going to uh, discuss collective bargaining, and that would be for the selectmen, to consult with counsel, and I think that was what was intended, but it was not phrased that way. You have to be careful, and you'd have to refer to 91A to B, consult with counsel. I would ask you one second, Ms. Woolsey. Yeah. Is this a direct... Um, because we had a problem, and I mentioned it at the last meeting, and I'm going are you, to... Are you mentioning a specific change to the draft minutes that were... No, um, I'm not going to make a motion to change the draft minutes until the draft minutes are in complete draft minutes form, which will probably be by September when we can address it. But I want to point out to you that before we get stuck again with a motion and turning off that TV, like we did last month because of the NHMA, you point need to get... You need to get a copy of the Code of Ordinances do and make do sure noted. I will, I will, we're sticking to it. I, I believe that has been uh, spoken enough. Does anybody else have any more It's four pages, Chapter 569. Minutes. Yep. Mr. Jones and then Mr. Kravitz. Mr. Chairman, I move that we table the, the, the approval of the May minutes until a subsequent meeting when we'll be presumably approving the April and March minutes as well. I'll second, Mr. Jones. And if I may speak to my motion. There are concerns that uh, one member has made relative to the, the content. Uh, I, I am impressed by the amount of detail in these minutes. <laughs> I mean, many, many pages. Uh, ca trying to capture the NHMA presentation. Correct. And the, I just have, personally, I haven't had enough time to look at the document. It's so lengthy sure. uh, in terms of its validity. If, if so, uh, and, and, and just one further point. Sure. Uh, 91A does require that the minutes be posted five days after the meeting. Mm -hmm. And here we're seeing it, you know, uh, you know, over 30 days later mm -hmm. in our email. And I think that... Uh, there's probably ways of getting it in front of our eyeballs sooner in the future. Sure. Okay. And that will probably uh, help prevent further tabling of minutes as we've, as we've done now, I think, for the last three months. So that's my motion to table it until the subsequent meeting. If I could just ask you to hold on to your motion just to see if there's anything that Mr. Kravitz has to add beforehand so that way they might go into the, the minutes before. And then I'll be more than happy to uh, accept your motion if that's all right with you. My motion is on the table and second. I second I seconded, yeah. Okay. Um, any discussion on the matter, the motion that's in hand? Mr. Pierce. Yes. Uh, one thing that we may be able to look at in this conversation is it has to be po posted within five days, but that could be a draft. It yes. It have to right. be the yes. final lip print first. And it has to be marked the draft first, the first they, they were posted yeah. mm -hmm. on the website five days, business days after. They have to, um, they have to be labeled, you know, it's a draft. They do get labeled draft. Yeah. Well, well, my comment, it was a comment, it wasn't part of the motion. My comment was that they should be emailed to us all right, as soon as they are available. I can make that happen. Thank you. Sure. Well, we can look it up, too. Yes, that I'm saying, well, why send it to us email when we could have looked it up as well? Right. So we're expecting an email. Let's get it timely. Sure. I just want to reiterate. Um, Stephen, Wilson, I can't hear you. I just want to reiterate to Mary Louise. Um, I don't want to sound. That's the way we always did it, but the way we've always done it. When Joan Rice um, was the secretary, just as she still is with the village district, she right. always ends it with respectfully submitted Joan Rice secretary. Correct. And so I agree with you. I think it's not too difficult to add that to the bottom. And I don't think that's a tall order either. I think we can fix that fairly simply. Um, uh, Mr. Jones had a motion to table. It was seconded by Mrs. Wolseley. All those in favor of tabling the fi uh, 517 minutes. Um, I'm going to go and do an oral count. Mr. Henderson, Ms. Barnes, Mr. Pierce, Mr. Kravitz, Mr. Cliff, Mr. Bridal, Mr. LeBranch, Mr. Jones, you're in the it's affirmative. Unanimous. Uh, Ms. Augustine, Mr. Ladd, Ms. Wolseley, all those Sorry. object, all those, and then ask Mr. Labum. And that, Mr. Chairman, is with the caveat that the draft will be cleaned so that we can work for a, a corrected draft when we make the motions in September. I just want to say I took the time and didn't read them, even though I've been watching yeah. Sand grow for five days. I read them too, Brian, but they need to be cleaned a little bit. Um, 
moving on to new business, we had a... Um, uh, sure, Mr. Kravitz. Yeah, the reason I, on the minutes, the reason I wasn't at the last meeting was I put the 19th in the calendar because you announced that, and I didn't ch get, check my emails till Wednesday, so yeah. okay. I didn't know I was missing a meeting. Okay. Uh, are you requesting to be marked as uh, excused? No, as excused or just noted now, so. that there was a scheduling yeah. mix-up. Mr. Fair enough. Chairman. Ms. Wolsey. Yes. I have that noted, and I'm going to move to make that correction once we get the draft minutes that are appropriately done. What correction? In September. Sonny was marked as unexcused, and that was not correct. The date was confusing to him. And I will move to correct that in the minutes as su at, in when, September. When appropriate in when September. When appropriate. Um, under new business, we had a request for public comment. I believe the email request um, from the Rational Taxpayers of Hampton was sent, if I'm not mistaken, the first one was sent June 5th of this month, um, asking for an appointment to speak at our uh, meeting today. Um, it was brought to my attention that um, we had agreed and discussed as a board to uh, review and discuss people that would address this board that are not part of this board, um, albeit through an appointment or through public comment section. That would be a discussion that we would have at this table and not a discussion that I would make up on my own. So I declined um, the request for appointment for this evening's meeting as I think that it was appropriate for us to discuss it um, at minimum. Um, I would like to now um, put that to the table um, for discussion. Mr. Jones. Mr. Chair, was it possible it was brought to your attention by someone hitting the reply all button? <laughs> it was, and it was okay. done through a, an email as well that was directly to me. So. Um, there were multiple sources of people that brought that to my attention, sir. Only one factually, though. <laughs> uh, okay, like that's, a, that, that's just an aside comment. Sure, sure. Uh, I, I, it, it was my understanding, and when we did the rules in, I think it was April meeting, mm -hmm. uh, we didn't vote on any of them. We didn't put them down in writing. So I think that there is some degree of um, confusion in people's minds is exactly what the rules are. Um, I believe that the conversation that we had about the rules on this particular point was suggestive that the entire body can approve an appointment or the chairman can make an appointment on his own because the chairman makes up the agenda. Yeah. Uh, so I think we might need to do something about getting a bit more, um, perhaps putting our rules down in writing, I guess is another way of simply putting it. Um, I'm not. I, I personally don't have a great issue with, with uh, you know, chairman making a call on such requests, right? But I also understand, based on the discussion, how it could be read that only the majority of the committee can make the determination, and and so I'm I'm prepared to discuss that point. Sure, and I think that that's the point that we should uh, stick to. Now I do feel that though we should have something in writing, that um, solves this problem ahead moving forward. Um, for now, even if. I had the call to make this call by myself, which it sounds like I did have that authority. Um, this is still a appointment or um, topic that I think deserves the attention of the board um, brought up, brought in front of the board to make that discussion as a board to take everybody's yeah. thoughts into consideration before just go ahead and putting this on and. Um, and forcing everybody to deal with this. Let's, I, I think it would be best for us to talk about our options and discuss it, and then as a board decide if this is something we want to move forward with or not. Um, Mr. Pierce. Uh, historically, when we first passed this policy, probably 10 or 15 years ago, letting somebody speak from the public, if somebody showed up, Joe Blow shows up at our meeting, and he wants to say something, be brought to the chairman's attention, you'd vote on right then mm -hmm. to let them speak right then. Mm -hmm. It wasn't something you discussed six months or a month in advance. Sure. But. Uh, what? Well, uh, are you all set, Mr. Pierce? I'm all set. Okay, I'll go to Ms. Wolsey. 
Yes. Most of the time, and I've been dealing with the Budget Committee many years, most of the time you get someone who wants to make a comment is when you're in the middle of the budget discussions and you might be discussing something about the police department or the public works department and John Doe has shown up and he's taking exception. He might have even come out of his house to come and holler at you. And we would always ask the pleasure of the board, and I don't remember anyone ever having been denied. But it... it People asking for appointments or asking for permission to speak before the Budget Committee generally comes in the context of the work sessions on the actual budget. But this, this is a little unusual, sure. but worthwhile. Yeah, well, my only comment is I think it's appropriate. On the, you've got an agenda writing for public comment. Since it really isn't, we're not discussing the budget. And mm -hmm. he, it's a procedure that he's questioning with the Board of Selectmen. I think that's the time to let them speak. Yes. Hmm. Any other discussions? I guess I don't know how questions he has for the Board of Selectmen, how addressing it here is going to accomplish anything mm. to the 2017 budget we're trying to work on right now, or we will be working on. Uh, Mr. Chen. I'm sorry to have to dig into my old ways, but the way we've always done it is by appointment. If someone wants to come in and has a, you know, no. has something they want to talk to the board about, well, fine. They get in touch with you. You put them on the agenda. It's done. We've n not done public comment unless, like Mary Louise stated, that you know when we're in the middle of something, yeah. if somebody flew down here, we would you know give them you know consider a thanks. Mm -hmm. But uh, other than that. That's not been the way we've done business. Uh, if they want to make an appointment, that's fine. Okay. Mr. Henderson. I'd have to agree on that. Um, you know, I, I, two folds, I guess. One is I have no issues with people wanting to come in and uh, discuss their issues. Let's say it's what taxpayers and everything's about, and they want to know what's going on. Make sure the but, microphone can hear you, Stephen. Um, you know, going through you first uh, certainly would make it easier for the committee. So, you know, then we can all know what to, what to discuss and what it's all about and yeah. form a better opinion, I believe, you know. So, yeah. Mr. LeBranch. Um, <clears throat> this is my fourth cycle on the budget committee, and to, in my <coughs> mind, I don't remember that this budget committee um, had public comment available. Right. It's just not part of the format that we've mm -hmm. had in the past. Right. Um, now, being specific with Mr. Silverdick and the issue that he um, wanted to talk about on the agenda, I am personally very familiar with it because I watched him give a performance at the Selectmen's meeting. The very next edition of the Hampton Union, the entire um, speech that he gave to the selectmen, word for word, was in the Hampton Union. So I had another opportunity to read about it. And as well, there were stories in the Hampton Union after that that discussed what happened. And the selectmen even, um, at one point, the, the town attorney at the selectmen's meeting explained some of it. I personally am quite aware, I'm not sure that um, that anything said tonight is going to in any way, the budget committee is going to in any way affect that particular situation, okay? And um, maybe we could, maybe we couldn't. But at the end of the day, what are we going to accomplish? Nothing. It's all going to be the same, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -mm. So... And as far as the, we, we went through the, for, uh, we prepared a budget for 2016. We finished with the budget. We presented it to the legislative body or to the, um, the, the meeting that they had prior to the actual right. voting. Deliberative session. Deliberative session. That okay. is the legislative body. Legislative mm -hmm. body. We prepared it to the legislative body. It went through the deliberative session. <coughs> we've made some changes. It then was pre presented to the voters. It was voted on. After that, that's the number. The governing body, uh, we learned all about this from our May meeting from the uh, Municipal Association. The governing body 
in, in a, the selectmen then went on to spend the money. Mm -mm. Then has the authority to spend the money. We don't have the authority to spend money. The treasurer doesn't have authority to spend money. The, the board of selectmen in this town has the authority to spend the money that has been out, has been uh, raised and appropriated for that budget that was approved. So, at the end of the day, how does that become the budget committee's problem? I don't see it. Okay, I don't see it. So, and I'm not. Mm -hmm. I don't. I'm not. I'm not this is not open for, I'm not here to have a discussion with one-on-one. Right. -on -one. Everything I'm saying is directed through the chair. So I've said my piece. Thank you very much. And Norm, it's not that I don't love you. Are you saying that through the chair? <laughs> Again, this is through the chair over there, okay? End of speech. Thank you very much. Does anybody who haven't had a chance to speak yet wants to talk? Hi. Don't click send calls. Mr. Kravitz? Oh, yeah. My only comment is normally the trustees as trust account have a very small budget. We usually don't even call them. The only time I recall a couple of years ago we had a budget item and I asked Mr. Silver at the time because he's using the financial trust as a private bank and I asked him the expense ratio of the mutual funds that they were investigating, that they were investing in, and I never did get an answer because I use Vanguard, and Vanguard has, I use basically two funds, and um, the expense ratio was five basis points. And since Mackinson & Company is an investor, of the private bank, he gets dividends from the bank as well as being paid. I was just curious to see what the what the expense ratio was on a common trust fund. Sure, Mr. Jones. Um, I acknowledge what um, Mr. LeBrand said with regards to the trust and having the authority to spend money, with the caveat according to law, and. Uh, yes, I'm, I'm speaking through the chair to the body and specifically speaking to Mr. LeBranch's comments. Of course, Slackman do, does have the authority to expend the money according to law. That's the extra thing that needs to be remembered at all times. And I did watch the presentation, as Le Mr. LeBranch said, and I understand there's questions of legality. Mm -hmm. So if, if there are questions of legality, some of which one might interpret from the Board of Selectmen's meeting there's been an admission that it wasn't quite up to snuff legally, then they didn't expend the money according to law. And so perhaps we need to hear about it. In any case, that is not my main concern about the topic at hand, which is we have a request from a citizen, a stakeholder in Hampton, to come and speak to us about matters of, of, of money in this town, any kind of money is related to the budget committee, not just the budget, how, how money is expended and everything about money in this town, the budget committee has some responsibility for. So when a citizen comes forth, and frankly there are not enough citizens coming forth to speak at public bodies, and I think we could all acknowledge that, to sit here and, and suggest to deny such a citizen, whoever it may be, would be a, 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 a complete... Uh, abdication of our responsibility to encourage public participation. So in my estimation, we must say yes. The question is, how do we say yes? I believe that the appropriate time for Mr. Silverdick to make his presentation would be in our September meeting, and I make a motion that we invite Mr. Silverdick on the agenda in our September meeting. Can I get a second? I will second that. Can Thank I you. speak to the motion? Yeah. Um, you bring up some very good points about citizen awareness and citizen action, um, and I agree with you on those points that people should come forward and have a input and, and bring their concerns to this board. That's what this board is here for. We are responsible to the taxpayer. They're the ones that elect us. Mm -hmm. They're our constituents, uh, and, and that's who we work for uh, is the taxpayer. My concern and the reason I brought this up 
um, the way I did and why I declined the appointment in the first place is that this request was not made from a citizen. It was made from an organization. An organization that um, specifically said in their email to the board that they were stuck in a situation with the Board of Selectmen and that they were trying to um, bring more exposure to um, an issue that they had with the Board of Selectmen on something that had to do with purchasing policy and encumbrances. Now, I it's my opinion that encumbrances are definitely something that needs to be discussed. I agree with Tim. It's something that should be discussed closer to when the budget system comes in because that's when it comes into play. I feel that if there are encumbrances to discuss, that this information should be brought to us from the finance department. I feel that we, in entertaining a request for an appointment from an anonymous watchdog group, um, to speak at our board, who we don't know who they're representing, um, I think it could be construed as them trying to circumvent the Board of Selectmen. And I, I, I get very nervous about inviting that kind of, setting that precedent in this board, which is why I did not want to approve the request myself. I wanted to hear everybody else on it. Mm -hmm. um, as it is something that we have all discussed, hasn't really been done on this board before, this is a precedent-setting event, which is why I think the input from every member on this board should be um, taken into consideration. Now, if this initial request for an appointment was made by a citizen, taxpayer, mm -hmm. that was not coming from a political watchdog advocacy group, I would have no problem getting behind inviting that citizen to sit before our board and discuss things. But when you have a group of people that are getting together, talking about actions and bringing actions before the Board of Selectmen, and then they say, well, we didn't get to where we wanted to go there, so let's try using the Budget Committee to, for a forum, that's where I get nervous. And that's where I get nervous bringing that type of attention to this board. I do think that this board should encourage citizens to come out. I'm okay with a public comment section um, with rules. I definitely think Mr. Jones brought up a good point. This is something we should put in writing for future references because it sounds like it's only going to happen more. Um, but I would at least like you to take my thoughts into consideration as well on this matter. Um, there is a motion before the board by Mr. Jones to have Mr. Silberdick um, appear before our September meeting. It was seconded by Mr. Lapham. And if I may speak to my motion, Mr. Chairman. Sure. Uh, my motion was to invite uh, Norm Silberdick to our September meeting. It was not to invite rational taxpayers. Right. Right. And whether a rational taxpayers is an anonymous group or not is uh, is an interesting phrase. I mean, they're not they're an anonymous group, I guess, because their roster is a kind of like not made publicly available, right? So I, I, it begs the question: There are so many groups in this town. I mean, Experience Hampton is their roster in its entirety publicly available? I think not. Is the American Legion in its roster in its entirety made publicly available? I think not. So should we call them anonymous groups as well? I think not. I think the use of anonymous groups is way overblown. It's got nothing to do with it. This motion is about inviting Noam Silberdick, who made a request under his name, Noam Silberdick, to speak to the Budget Committee on matters of finance. That was not in the request. The request said our organization has been at loggerheads with the Board of Selectmen. That's the... the Excuse me, Mr. Chairman. If we're request. going to quote, let's be accurate. It sure. says, quote, as you are aware, our organization has been at loggerheads with the BOS on illegal encumbrances. Note the word illegal. Illegal encumbrances, while we are not taking action, we do feel that it's an important issue for the BUDCOM to be aware of when you begin the 2017 budget reviews. 
and will once again be impacted by year end, year end spending. So, so essentially inviting the organization to come speak before the board, which is well, I can see, I can see, Mr. Chairman, and, and, and if I may reclaim my time. Sure. I can see your the, the possibility of reading this as a request from rational taxpayers. I can see that possibility, but I negate that with my motion. My motion is not to invite the rational taxpayers here. My motion was to invent citizen Norman Silberdick to come speak to us on matters of money that are of concern to Norman Silberdick, citizen of Hampton, New Hampshire. Mm -hmm. That's my motion. All this other noise is just noise. And I won't contribute to it any further. Thank you. Any other discussion on the matter? Mr. Kravitz. Yeah, if I recall last year, we had an issue with the Board of Selectmen over when they withdrew money out of the reserve and we called, we contacted the DRA and they gave us a, a different, they gave us an interpretation that would challenge the, the way the Board of Selectmen did it. The other aspect is I don't, the Hampton Union, I don't know how many people read it or Channel 22 is watched by the, I know when Dancing with the Stars are on, I don't watch the Board of Select. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm if here. a citizen wants to, as a resident wants to come speak to us, I don't have a problem and I think it should be under public comment. I think it's an imposition to ask him to come back on September. He's talking about spending procedures, waiving the buying policy of the Board of Select. And let him speak. Not the motion. That's not what the motion is right now on the floor. Mr. Henderson. I'm all set with that. Okay. Ms. Wilson. Uh, let, let's not confuse this because some individuals in town wear two hats. This has nothing to do with the uh, trustees of the trust funds. Nothing. This has to do with the uh, undesignated fund balance being spent out at the end of the year last year and the manner in which that spending might have been done. So this is a totally separate issue. I know uh, some of some of the uh, residents in this town wear two hats, but I want to clarify that. None of this discussion that Mr. Silberdick is proposing to bring in to the committee is related in any way <coughs> to the trust funds. Mr. Silberdick. And I spoke to several of you about this, um, of course, individually. If, if um, Norm Silberdick had asked to be on the agenda of this budget committee as the chairman of the trustees of the trust fund to come in and talk to us about an issue related to the trustees of the trust fund, I would be 100% Yes, because mm -hmm. it would be no different than if the police chief or the fire chief mm -hmm. or any of the other people that come before this board normally. And I'm not saying that we can't change whatever rules that we have, but in the past, we have not had public comment. For instance, like the Selectman Board does, or even the Beach, the Village District, has an actual, on the agenda, always public comment. We've never had that in the past, if that's the board's wishes to establish that for the future. I don't have a problem with that. I do agree with Nick that if uh, Norm wants to come back in, mm -hmm. in uh, September, I agree with Tim's uh, motion as citizen Norm Silberdick, right. I would welcome him with open arms. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I agree with you. I agree with you. I th I How agreeable of you. I, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think the... Um, the last comment I'll make, because we're kind of beating this to death, is um, if the vote goes in the way of inviting Mr. Silverdick to come back to our committee on the 21st, I would ask that in regards to um, purchasing policies um, that we tread very carefully with how much... Um, we were at odds last year with this town because we tried to delve too much into operations and policies. And I would say, well, that is not something we should avoid because everything should be talked about. Government should be transparent. I would just ask us to um, take into consideration the atmosphere of things that are going on. And um, I fully 
encourage the discussion about encumbrances, but um, would just caution to to you know mind the atmosphere of things that are going on in regards to how we discuss policy and changing policies and 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 things of and that Nick, nature. And of course, Norm would be coming in to Mr. simply Paris, Mr. Jones. Norm would be coming in to simply give his opinion. Correct. Period. It doesn't mean that we're going to start setting policy and telling the selectmen what to do because that's not our job. Mr. Jones. Be sensitive to the atmosphere, Mr. Chairman. Yeah. As we always are. There's nothing special about this situation. Right. And when it comes to changing policy, we don't. We do not affect policy except to the extent of how much we choose to recommend funding it. We do not have any authority on policy. We do, however, have authority over recommending uh, expenditures as they may or may not relate to existing policies. Okay. Mr. Chairman, I vote to move the question. The motion on the table was to invite Citizen Norman Silverdick to speak at our meeting in September as an agenda item or um, public comment. Public comment. And it was seconded by Mr. Lapham. All those in favor? Mr. Henderson, Mr. Pierce, Mr. Lapham, Mr. Plough, Mr. LeBranch, Mr. Jones, Mr. Ladd, Ms. Wolseley. All those opposed? Mr. Kravitz, Mr. Bridal, Ms. Augustine, any abstentions? Ms. Barnes. Um, that is a majority, um, and I will make it so that Mr. Silverdick can come back on the September meeting. Uh, Mr. Silverdick, I will send you an email when that meeting is so you can be fully aware of uh, when to show up. Um, on to the next agenda item. Which is other new business as of right now. I didn't have anything else for the agenda. Did anybody, Mr. Jones? As you pointed out and we discussed briefly, uh, the need to, you know, uh, assert our rules in, in written form, I think, is becoming increasingly apparent. And so uh, I would I would suggest that we have uh, you know some uh, discussion about you know going about doing that. Mr. LeBranch. Um there was a committee formed two years ago. Rules committee, as a matter of fact. You were chairman. Yes, and you <laughs> helped me. And I think Jerry Zanoy and there were a couple other people that contributed. And all of those rules are written down. We just never got around to. Making them formal. Mm -hmm. So, if you'd like, in the September meeting, I can bring. As a matter of fact, before the September meeting, I will send the chairman those rules, and then, if he would like, he can send them out to you, and then we could possibly talk about it in September, and formalize them, change them. It's a fluid document, so. That is already in. It's been done. It was like a foundation. Send yes. it out for people. Exactly, Mr. Jones. Chairman, when we discussed the rules in uh, April, uh, we acknowledged that we're a new committee every year mm -hmm. as a consequence of the election, and therefore there are no rules. And so we set about making our rules, and we did so with with little regard to what was established in prior years, other than our own instinct of what might be right. Um, I had a great hand in contributing to the lengthy written verbiage in the prior rules that were never voted on. Uh, and what we discussed this year is very different than what those rules were. So I, I don't think that's a good basis uh, to begin, because we began with the basis that we discussed. Just the foundation. I wasn't at the April meeting or at a broad the Reclaiming my time. That I just said. So of course. I, I think the, the proper basis is if we're going to begin somewhere, we need to begin with what we discussed in April and just put that in writing. And use those as a foundation and springboard? Yeah. Okay. Can well, you we do, can still can you see that? what Steve had. I'll send it to Nick and he d can decide, just as I said. Yeah. Uh, I can put Mr. It on Chair? The agenda. Mr. Ladd. Point of information you're inviting Mr. Silberdick to address the board. Under the title of public comment, correct? No, no. I invite I invited him to be on the agenda. Oh, I voted for him to be public comment. Well, the motion was I for him to be on the agenda. Right. That, that was my understanding. No, that was the agenda. I, I am not calling for the existence of a public comment item on the agenda. That motion was clear. 
it was to put him on the agenda. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not under public comment. That was my second. I misunderstood. Right. We can take a revote on it. No, we don't need to. Yeah, it's fine. I can, I can it's, it's well, we Mr. Ladd is bringing up an excellent well, point okay. about, yeah. about, about the existence of rules relative to appointments and whether and it also begs the question of whether or not we should have a public comment on, on our standard agenda or not. Um, but we didn't address either of those points in our discussion in April. <laughs> for rules. No vote, vote. One, one second. Uh, I'm inclined to. There's no motion agenda. on the table. Correct. Yeah. And, and just speaking to this point, public are. comment is just for everybody that doesn't isn't familiar. Public comment is usually set out for the public. It's usually timed in length, and it's not something that the board usually has a discussion following. Whereas an appointment, as Mr. Jones suggested, would invite the speaker to come in and have an open forum to create a discussion. It would be a point on the agenda um, to have a kind of a back and forth discussion. We're all in agreement there, everybody. Yes, I just understand that. So I think I think the intent of Mr. Jones's motion, correct me if I'm wrong, was to have him as an agenda item not as a section of public comment. That way he would not be timed or held to those restrictions. He would be an agenda item that would allow him to address this board from the guest table. I, w I would draw the analogy to when we have department heads come in, they have appointments that come in and talk about their budget. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Um, this is the same situation. It's just another person with an appointment. I did not intend, nor did I state, that we would be true that we would be creating a public right. comment right. area on our agenda for the next meeting or any subsequent meeting. Yeah. If, if, there is a, if there is a desire to have a discussion about whether we ought to have public comment, I think we can perhaps have that, but at the moment, what I'm trying to do is capture the rules that we've already established in April that's getting kind of like fuzzy in people's mind, sure. and we want to get it in writing, and how we go about getting it in writing was really the suggestion at this moment. I'm happy to talk about the other points because I think they're valid as well. Um, just for a point of information where there was confusion on the vote, I would like to call for a re-vote just so everybody's in the clear mm -hmm. and everybody knows. But I there was no confusion. Just there was confusion on my part, and I specifically asked and had said that. I said he's coming here to give his opinion, and we're not going to make any changes. So mm -hmm. I was of the opinion that it was a public comment, and Bob, you picked up on that. Okay, so there was confusion. And I would say in what forum? Do you make a request for an appointment to speak under public comment? I would, I you would, ask for if another there, vote? if When you there, go to the Board of Selectmen to make public comment, do you give advance warning that you're going to be making I public would, comment? Okay. Of course I'm, not. Run the I'm, meeting. I am going to call for a re-vote on the vote from earlier um, to avoid any confusion um, with what's going on. There was discussion of both types of appointments coming in and public comment during the discussion um, so therefore mr. chairman may I ask a question about this <coughs> so when there's confusion about the content of a, of, of a motion or the motivation behind those who voted uh, you would suggest that a body would be wise to take a revote I would suggest that everybody is clear so that way everybody's heard it's not fair to uh, have people be confused and have their vote be read the wrong way mm -hmm. Right, so you would consider it wise for a body to take a revote on such on such occasions, correct? Is that, is that your opinion? Of this specific instance, yes. Oh, well, why wouldn't it be true for all instances? I think this one is circumstantial, and I think that it requires us to give it its due attention. But not all instances circumstantial? I, we can have that conversation some other time. <coughs> what was this? Well, I'm concerned about, the, I'm concerning about what, what kind of uh, parliamentary decision the chair is making at this point. Are we, are we taking a, a new vote because we didn't vote correctly the first time? Or are we taking a new vote because uh, there is general expression <coughs> of confusion uh, about the facts in, in, uh, relative to the motion? If, if you're making a, a, a call for a revote because Bad there were confusion about the facts, then I'm simply asking whether you would say that would be true generally. It seems when there's a motion made and there was confusion about the facts, yeah. and that itself justifies a revote, it, is that that's a parliamentary question, Mr. Okay, Chairman. Okay, Mr. Chairman, it's, point of order, point of order, please, gentlemen, please. Did somebody write down the exact wording of the motion? Is that typed in for reference? You I made a motion. Through, what was the exact order. wording of the motion? I moved that Norman Silver Dick be placed on the agenda for September's meeting. I second that motion. That's okay. Correct. That's correct. That's pretty clear. 
Hmm? I hope somebody wrote it down so we don't have a scrambled that's up version in the minutes. But that's the only part that I, I, I wrote I down I object one to taking a revote if the motion itself was clear and it appears to me Crystal. that that language is clear. And then when I We're going to be here all night. I know. And then when I spoke about it in the discussion, part of it, yeah. I specifically said, I talked about Noam Silbedek. I guess we can go back and watch the tape. Is yeah. If Noam Silbedek came here as a representative of the trustees of the trust fund, mm -hmm. that would be one thing. Coming here as an individual to speak. Yeah. And yeah. I specifically said during public comment. Yeah. Okay. So nobody spoke up at that point. So my vote was based on that. I looked right at Nick when I said it, okay? All right, Steve. Now, Bob, you picked up on it, okay? So if we, we can sit here and talk all night about it. Oh, I hope All not. we can take a vote, okay? And clarify this, period. So but that was what, part, what this, what this I think I mean, that was giving you some space because you misspoke. That you was want us to pick on every damn word you speak. We'll do that, Steve. Mm. Let's get real, That was part okay? of the discussion, and the motion was clear. Enough. And I have a question on old or new business, whichever the chair wants to. Um, Mr. Chair, okay. this okay. is an important Hold issue, on. Mr. Chair. I know, and I'm going to stop things down. A motion to reconsider a vote needs to be made by somebody who is in the affirmative. And Mr. LeBranch was in the affirmative, and he has asked to reconsider the vote. So I'm Mr. going Chairman, to... a point of order. He did not ask. You simply proposed that we were going to re-vote mm -hmm. because someone was confused. Okay. And You're right. A person in the majority needs to call for a revote. Calling for there a needs to be a second to that motion. I'll second it. <laughs> There's a motion and a second on the table to reconsider the vote. Um, all those in favor? Of Mr. Hen of, of to reconsider the vote. To reconsider, yeah. Mr. Henderson, Miss Barnes, Mr. Kravitz, Mr. Lapham, Mr. Plouffe, Mr. Bridal, Mr. LeBranch, Miss Augustine, and Mr. Ladd. All those opposed? Yeah. Well, almost. Miss Wolseley, Mr. Pierce, Ms. all those abstaining? I'm okay. Mr. Jones is in the A, in the affirmative. <laughs> okay. I'd like to get some work done around I here. would like to invite Mr. Jones to remake his motion um, so that way we're all clear on what we're voting on. My motion was and remains to have Norman Silverdick placed on the September agenda. Second. We've beat this up with discussion. Is there any confusion about the motion on the table? God. All right, I will call for a vote then. All double, those in favor. Double check with Mr. Is it okay? The you, okay. Is it, being no confusion, all those in favor of having Norm Silverdick coming to the meeting as an agenda item in September, all those in favor, raise your hand. Mr. Henderson, Mr. Pierce, Mr. Lapham, Mr. Pluff, Mr. Jones, Ms. Wolseley. All those opposed? Mr. Ladd, Ms. Augustine, Mr. LeBranch, Mr. Bridal, and Mr. Kravitz. All those abstain? Ms. Barnes. That is a learning, Regina. <laughs> a six five one vote, therefore it's still a majority. Therefore, Mr. Uh, nothing really changed. Mr. Mr. Silverdick will come in, yeah. but at least now it is clear. Okay. Back to the new business. Thank you, Mr. Ladd, for your attention to that. We still, still send him an email. Though. I will definitely follow up with him on that. Miss Wolseley. Ah, uh, I'd like to make a request to the IT committee, if that's possible. And I was kind of hoping that we would have the committee representatives on the agenda tonight, the rec and, and uh, police and DPW and so forth. Um, I hope we have them perhaps, you know, in the fall. But uh, I had occasion to go researching on my computer on the streaming videos. What a mess. They're all intertwined. There's no logic. Uh, there's no segregation of the selectman minutes vis-a-vis -vis budget committee minutes vis-a-vis -vis other people's minutes. Try to find something in that mishmash. So I'm wondering if the IT committee would have the opportunity to see if we can restructure before much more time goes by and see if we can have a more logical arrangement on the computer 
so that if I want to look up something from June 1st, 2015, under the Board of Selectmen, I can just go right there. There was even one, there's even one entry in there for the Board of Selectmen for August 2018. I thought that was rather creative. Um, <laughs> but you can scroll down, and the print is that big, and you can go totally crazy trying to find just one or two meetings that you want to refresh your memory on. So it's, uh, I guess, a plea from me if the IT committee would like to take on that. I'm not sure how you do it. I'm not a computer expert. But it seems to me if we can get meetings in chronological order and segregate the entities that have the meetings, it would be so much easier for the public to go in and take a look and find the videos. Commissioner Chairman, may I speak to that? Mr. Pierce. I've not had any problems with that whatsoever. Well, it's all mushed together. No, you, if you click on it, it, it's right there. You can Mr. find Pierce. what you're looking for. No. Well, I found what I was looking for. It took about an hour. Mr. Jones, yes. to this point. I was, we had a, we had our last <coughs> IT subcommittee meeting in, I believe it was April, could have been early May. Mm -hmm. At that meeting, I was elected chair of the subcommittee, and the IT subcommittee, when it meets again, mm -hmm. will take your suggestion under advisement. <laughs> Thank you, you just look at it. Thank you for your suggestion. There's a better way to do it. I'd appreciate it. Sure. Okay. Uh, was that it for new business, Ms. Wilson? Yes, sir. We All did right. have a, that was kind of an aborted discussion on getting the rules written down, remember? Uh, is that something you want to go into depth about now? We already did. I mean, we we decided that we're going to. What bring did we resolve? I I think resolution we're going to that. talk. We're going to have a. We're going to have a, a discussion. Yeah, I think. I think the suggestion that you made was to put in document form the rules that we discussed in April, yeah. so that people can refer to those. And there was talks of Mr. LeBranch bringing in what he had from years past mm -hmm. to see get everybody together and see what works best for this committee. There you go. I think that needs to happen at a later date, as I don't have either of those documents with me now. So that would be have to be in an uh, agenda item for <coughs> the next meeting's minutes. That's fine, but who would who would produce the uh, the written form of the uh, April meeting? I thought you could, I thought you were. Um... We we do have the minutes from that meeting, and I will go back and review the tapes, and um, and and come up with some uh, stenography from that. Thank you. So you're going to produce a document, sure, yeah, okay. and I'll disseminate that accordingly before That's the next meeting. Like Mr. maybe Chairman, a couple I weeks. Excuse myself, I have to get that policy. Sure. Hey, are we are we ready for an uh, for, maybe for a, a couple? No, we're not. Okay, no, I'm going to have to leave too. Yeah. I maybe. understand. I, please maybe excuse couple, me. Maybe a couple weeks prior to at least please a couple weeks so that we have a chance to review. Sure. I don't like the you know day before kind of thing. So sure, it doesn't help that much. So that'd be great. So you're going to produce a document. Mr. Right. Branch is going to. Do a, a mass emailing of the other document from years ago. Correct. And we're going to use that to form the basis for our discussion in September. Great. Thank that, you for that clarifying that resolution. That Appreciate it. Thank item. you. Any other new business? Uh, it's not really new business. It looks like we're going to have a fun year, though. <laughs> I appreciate your enthusiasm, Mr. Kravitz. Uh, being there, no more new business. That's great. Um, I would ask, there was a request made um, by not one but multiple members of this committee to have representatives uh, update the boards um, in regards to their uh, the work that they're doing on their boards. Um, the first one on the list is uh, the Board of Selectmen, and then I have the Village District, and then the School Board. So if you have an update for us, Ms. Barnes, I would like you to bring that to the board. If not, we'll be time to the Village District. Um, well, no, like I said, we're, we're expecting the departmental proposed budget sometime in July and it's to the town manager's office, and then I'm not sure when exactly we'll see them. But like I, like I said, I stated before, I think every meeting, I'm looking forward to being the liaison between the committee and the board of selectmen. So like I said, as soon as I have Now she's looking forward to it. <laughs> huh? Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Barnes. I have questions for her. Are we going to have questions for the representatives? On, I have on her update to the committee? Well, I have questions to, for her as the select man representative. In reference to what? First of all, um, <laughs> I've been banging my head on the wall for several years in this and got nowhere, but you may be more charming for the board. 
Is it possible to get an ADA compliant ramp at Place Cove in North Beach? I think they are talking about that. I yes. have hollered yes. about that, and yes. it is almost the Fourth of July, and I even suggested a a um, ramp that could be taken apart, removed for off season, so it's not all damaged. I will note that again. I think we also had a citizen come in. Actually, but I have one been day. pleading for an ADA ramp up there for the last several. Is is the rest of your comments, Miss Wellesley, years. pertain to the budget in particular, um, as opposed to well, other she's requests? she's the select man representative. I would invite you to uh, call her directly. At and, as, as what, your selectmen well, let's, and voice let's, your concerns in that way if it's not the, directly regarding the 2017 the, budget. The reason for her be well, the 2016 budget comes into play too. That's the base that we're working from. The second question I have for you is that traditionally for the past several years, a non-union raises have been brought up on April 1st, and I didn't see you guys doing that. Are there to be no non-union raises this year? We have not addressed the subject yet. I know, we but it's be, yeah. after April 1st. Well, You'll end up by doing stuff retroactive. I just noticed that, and I thought I would mention. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. Mr. Mr. Ladd with the Village oh, District. I have another question for this. Sure. Right there. Um, in the wonderful financials. Yes. Okay. Uh, a couple of points. On page, uh, uh, get my glasses on so I can read the page numbers at the bottom. Yeah, page uh, 8 of 16. Look at the very bottom line on that page under communication and replacement equipment. We got 37,360. Attorney General said that that uh, had been killed. So I'm wondering why. It's Wait, what one? I right hear. Yeah, it's under it the. It was not allowed. That's per Mark. 2015 encumbrance column. Yeah, it, it yeah. was. It was not allowed according to Mark Gerald at the meeting. What do you mean? That's my note on that. And I have another one, but I'm not going to get the other one. See, I've been talking. It's a little. Well, yeah, I just got this today as well. Right. But yeah, I know we're having her come in next Monday. Yeah, ask what, what that's doing on there. That'd be my question. What do you mean it was not allowed? What? That's what Mark Jarrell said. It was allowed. There was no communication from the other side, so it could not be encumbered. But yet it's on the report as an expenditure, is what you're saying? No, it's still listed as an encumbrance. I see. Miss mm -hmm. Wagner, why well, it's only if the attorney's town attorney says it's not a valid encumbrance. Mr. Krabs. Yeah, since we're discussing the Board of Selectmen's rep, I <laughs> I wear these things because they don't amplify the sound in here. And normally during an, the recording, I get all kinds of static here. So oh. I've raised this with the Board of Selectmen. Actually, there's a procedure that most countries and most cities use it's called a T-coil. It's a copper wire that runs around the room and plugged into the amplifier, and I wouldn't have to wear these things. Uh, I've considered bringing an ADA suit, but, I mean, there's so many big problems in the town, I figured I would survive. Mr. Chairman, if I may. Ms. Barnes. Actually, I raised it with Ms. I would prefer that if I could actually, I mean, I know I'm here right now, and this is great, but if I could actually get these requests in written form by email, I will not reply all ever. I won't do it. So, but if you individually email me, I will definitely try to get an answer. And if I can't get the answer, I will go to the respective person oh, okay. and Good. find out an answer for you. Okay. I check my emails 55 times a day, so you shouldn't have a problem getting a response. But I will not reply all. I will reply directly back to you, and I will reply to the town council and to the town manager. Assistant Town Manager, the only people I will reply to, and you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Ms. Barrett. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, citizens, of course. <laughs> citizens, individual, individual, yes. Mr. Ladd, Village District. Well, as you all know, the Village District has entered the height of its season. <laughs> the Sandcastle uh, contest has been decided, but the Sandcastles will remain up until July 6th. On July 6th, We've added an additional event to conclude the sandcastles, which is at this time titled Hampton Summer Games. The most interesting part of this concept is it's a collaboration between the precinct, the state, 
the town, the schools, and Experience Hampton. All have participated in the preparation of this. Uh, and we hope for it to be a great success and that this collaboration will continue in the future. Uh, the targeted age group is 8 to 14, which is, in our opinion, an underserved group at the beach at That's this right. time. We've also reached out to the Winter kind of High School. Uh, their concert, unfortunately, this summer, which has become an annual event, was canceled due to weather. However, they are looking into the possibility of agreeing to perform seasonal music at the uh, New Year's Eve fireworks show, which would be nice to have. We basically, and basically, we're very active on the political side as well concerning the community rating system. And we're encouraged by the town planner that it is entirely possible we will be in the discounted phase of that program by October. It's okay. not absolute, but it's getting close. Okay. There's even a possibility we could get up to a rating of eight. If you're in the FUD program, you're a 10, but that gives you no discount. Nine gives you 5%, 10, uh, eight gives you 10%, mm -hmm. going up to uh, ultimately 45%, which I think one community in the universe has ever achieved but it's entirely possible to get up to an eight, even over time, seven. And we're quite pleased with the de degree of cooperation by the Board of Selectmen and particularly the planner's office. There's a lot of work that goes into making this happen. Uh, it looks like it's getting very close to happen. In general, we're just very pleased that we're able to work successfully with so many pieces of government. We actually went to the SAU 90 Marston School to discuss this July 6th program, and we went to the Sacred Heart School to discuss the same program. Mm -hmm. and we went to the Winnicott High School to discuss with the music department programs they are offering to try to present. That's kind of where we're at at this time. Oh, and one final thing. We've expanded our cooperation with the high school on the, uh, to, for the prom, Prom day, they come down on the beach and they have a walk across the shell, which the kids seem to thoroughly enjoy. This year, we provided more of a, an atmospheric background to the walk on the stage and also entertainment in the form of music oh, as they cross. The, and that seemed to have gone over pretty well, too. So we continue, hopefully, to be a work in progress for the good of the great community. That's it. I, uh, I work with several of the kids that attended that event for prom and they Kudos for that, Mr. Kraus. Are you going to schedule it a topless day at the beach? Or? <laughs> no, we're going to have a week. We're expanding. Because I told you both. Mr. Jones. 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 Mr. Ladd, is it, uh, since you're, you're cooperating and engaging with uh, Experience Hampton, a nonprofit group in town uh, with a, an anonymous roster, does that suggest that you would be equally willing to participate with other nonprofit groups in the town who also may or may not have an anonymous roster? Well, to my knowledge, Experience Hampton is not an anonymous ro a roster. In fact, we know most of the people who are on it. Uh, a representative from the town, the Department of Recreation, is on it. Everyone knows John Hyan Nyan runs it. I don't think of it as anonymous. And if any anonymous group wants to do good and wants to be a player and offer volunteers or economic support for one of our activities, we'd be more than happy to investigate. So you'd be happy to participate with other nonprofits in town in general, period. Is well, that right? As I said, it would depend what that participation would involve. We would not foreclose looking into anything. Mm -hmm. And Experience Hampton? Is that what we're talking about? Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure that we have a roster for that. I'm sure you have a roster. Like Whether it's publicly available or not is an open question. I will be making a formal request for that roster, a complete roster. Mm -hmm. And we'll see whether it's, in fact, publicly available. Oh, good. So I'll put that question mm -hmm. to rest, finally. Mm -hmm. well, they usually publicize mm -hmm. something or the meetings from past experiences. I'll appreciate it. And, of course, a list of all donations they've received from their members, because they do have a membership fee. Mm -hmm. yeah. I don't know. Is there any other questions for Mr. Ladd? Real one. Miss Wilson. More a suggestion. Remember, I came in and pleaded with you guys to use the microphones. Yep. And when I watched some of your meetings, some of the 
sound no is kind of fading a little bit. Uh, <laughs> one of the microphones was actually broken. Oh. And we we I don't try to get sure. cable to work on that issue. Because I figured my visit was wasted because no. I really am trying to hear you. Great. <laughs> All right. Just speak up there. Okay. Okay. Any more questions for Mr. Ladd? No. Um, there has been a request for a new Todd. There is no school representative here tonight, so we're going to forego that portion of the thing. There has been a request for a new topic, I would assume under new business, by Mr. Jones. Um, I'm willing to hear that request, Mr. Jones. I, I do miss Jenny. I wish you were here. I, I enjoy having her at every meeting. Um, the topic is, you know, public comment has been come up a number of times tonight, and I think we can maybe put it to rest, hopefully, uh, by having a brief discussion about it now. I do not favor public comment at the budget committee. Mm -hmm. I do favor uh, accepting requests to be put on the agenda. Now, how that distinguishes from the Board of Selectmen where people come in and, you know, express how they feel and so forth. We're talking about money, something that requires some forethought, not just you know, how we feel about money, right? Okay, and so I think making requests is the proper way of coming in. Having a public comment on agenda, I don't think it is proper. I hope we can all agree that we don't need a public comment item on our agenda. Right. So we can just put that to rest, hopefully. Any thoughts? I agree. I have no pro problem at all with an appointment right. by request. I do have a problem if someone appears before the board representing a group yeah. which does not identify yeah. itself as the official representative of that group. I don't think that's appropriate. We preach the doctrine of open transparency, 91A, do nothing, it'll be a meeting. So we shouldn't encourage that quasi-anonymous uh, nature of the presentation. If Mr. Silver will be here as an individual, mm -hmm. that's perfectly appropriate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it's totally inappropriate for him to mention he's representing any other group at that meeting. Well, perhaps we could also throw in the rule that we're not going to accept appointments from any group, only from stakeholders in Hampton, period. That's it. Mm -hmm. group that would be happy with that. I would be very happy with that. Group can be a stakeholder. Mm -hmm. Well, let the whole group come in. Yeah. Let the group identify itself. No, let the whole group come in as individuals. We, we will let individuals come in, not representatives of groups. You have to be careful on that because then every department represents a, right. a union or a group or a subset of garments, so you may be... No, 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 the departments represent, they come in here representing their budget yeah. request. They do that's an individual separate. request that's they're separate. making. Yeah. But they represent... It's not, a it's not a group that they're representing, yes, it's it themselves. Is. It's a union, it's a group of workers being we don't. We've never had a union come in here. You have no. people asking money to support a union contract coming in. I am saying... Be careful how you phrase it. Well, I am taking care. The union contracts are separate warrant articles. I'm fully aware okay. of that. And, and we do have individuals. Uh, I don't want to believe. I'm going to call a yeah. point of order. I think we discussed. I, I see your point, Tim, about not needing public comment. I think the majority of the board is in agreements with you. Mm -hmm. um, I think if there's a request at the next meeting to put something in writing that we don't have a public comment for the duration of our term for this year, as the rules reset every year. Um, I think we can address that in September. Um, as of right now, you know, the appointment was made for have to have Mr. Silber to come in. He will be on the agenda item. I don't, I don't personally, sitting right here, feel the need for a public comment section in September. Um, I or agree ever. with you. I don't see one ever needed. Um, but if there is another citizen that would like to reach out, by all means, get a contact with me. Um, and, and we encourage it and, and promise it will be less contentious right. in the future. <laughs> I would just, yeah, I would much just more recommend you come to me as a taxpayer and say, hey, Nick, I'm concerned. Can can I come to address your board? And, and we welcome it. Absolutely welcome um, I, I, I enjoy that feedback. Um, I have no other uh, agenda items. I would um, entertain a motion to so, adjourn. So moved. You need a time. Uh, Mr. Jones moves. Second, second by Mr. Pierce. Uh, all those in favor? You need a time. I will note the time. Unanimous. Uh, the time is 819. For the record, I will... Friday, 2317.5. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 802 for the record for Mr. Uh, LaBranch and right. Mr. Leighton leaving. Yeah. Thank you. It's a little detail.